since the beginning of the space age, or I mean, since the beginning of aviation, actually people were thinking, okay, in order to fly faster, you need to fly higher. They are flying subsonic and subsonic speed. And the supersonic will be like extremely loud. Can you explain how it works? Yeah, it's a mix of uh, an airplane and a rocket. Uh, we call our vehicle near space vehicles, hyperplanes. Hypersonic aircraft is something difficult to achieve. So we start by putting together an excellent team, finding experts in various areas that uh, can help us get to the first stages of prototyping. We've somewhat adopted the Spotify model for, uh, for, for managing our, our engineering. Fundamentally, it, it's about putting very, very small teams together. You define what these teams are doing and you let them go. This is a, more or less like a development of the very complex software, where instead of delivering a huge like, uh, piece of the code, you're basically doing this with multiple iterations. Um, we like to build things and see how they work. So we will begin by, by building small vehicles and prototyping small vehicles that will be flying in subsonic speeds. Uh, so after going subsonic and learning how to operate those machines, with the pilot in the loop first, then we go with the autopilot and the autonomous GNC solutions. Because Destinus is a, a vehicle without a pilot, uh, the vehicle will just fly through those points and go and land where it has to land. I mean, you know, automating the whole thing and making it fly by itself. And then next year we will also have a vehicle that is designed for supersonic speeds. We're still going to be producing noise when we take off and land with the uh, ATR engine, but uh, these noise levels won't be much louder than, than existing aircraft today. We will need a, a lot of suppliers, quality raw material that we can use in our manufacturing process. We want to do the quality control, the assembly, the, the engineering in-house, in destinies. Everyone's happy when you show progress, right? So, uh, even if it's small um, subsystems and things like that, right? It shows progress um, to everyone and to investors. Yeah, well, what we're developing is really something that is necessary for the future, both in terms of delivering cargo at a very, very fast speed, and then also on the clean aviation aspect. So hydrogen is the fuel of the future, it's not even like a fuel, I would say it's a carrier of the energy. So you can transfer energy from you know, solar panels or from nuclear reactor to the tanks of the cars or the planes or, or hyperplanes. We will have zero carbon emissions with the hyperplane network that we will be offering. We need like a, something like 10 hubs globally. And then implementing the infrastructures for the hydrogen refueling activities and the, the maintenance of the hyperplanes. So logistics, it's enabling. It's uh, not only part of economy by itself, but it's changing the life. The system was moving even before aviation. So the, any new way of transportation just opened new possibilities.